Thank you for listening to Guided Meditations from One Mind Dharma. You can visit OneMindDharma.com for more podcasts and to subscribe via Google Play, iTunes, or email. This podcast is offered freely, and we appreciate your support in keeping it going with all of the costs. To learn about supporting One Mind Dharma, visit OneMindDharma.com slash support. We're going to work with the fourth heart practice today, Upekka, or equanimity. This is the practice of cultivating a heart that remains balanced, willing to let go. Equanimity can hold together the other heart practices of metta, appreciative joy and compassion. As we respond with these qualities, equanimity helps us to remain stable, balanced, So you can allow your eyes to close and find your posture. Tuning into how the body actually feels in this moment. Letting go of all the ideas you have about what the right posture is. and tuning in to how the body actually feels. Noticing if there's any tension in the jaw, if the muscles in the abdomen are clenched. If there are any little shifts or adjustments you can make to be kind toward your body and your practice. You can feel the body breathing in the stomach, in the chest, at the nostrils. Simply arriving here where we are And we'll start our equanimity practice with a good friend. It could be simply that, a good friend. You could choose someone who's a family member, a significant other. And you don't need to interview too many people, maybe just going with whoever comes to mind. And as someone comes up, you can recognize this natural caring you have for this person. That within you, you want this person to be well, to be content and at ease, to not suffer. And at the same time, although we want these things for this person, we simply cannot control their happiness. And this is what equanimity is about. Recognizing our wishes and intentions for another being, while also recognizing that their happiness is ultimately in their control. So you can offer a phrase of equanimity, common phrases that are used are, may you be in charge 
of your own happiness. Not dismissing or falling into apathy, holding it with kindness and gentleness. May you be in charge of your own happiness. Your happiness is up to you, not my wishes for you. Your happiness is up to you, not my wishes for you. And finally, all beings are in charge of their own actions or their own karma. Recognizing that although you may show up for this person with a tender heart, with support, this person is ultimately in charge of their actions which bring consequences, pleasant or unpleasant. All beings are in charge of their own karma. And you can sprinkle in some phrases of metta or compassion some appreciative joy, whatever feels right, just to try to prevent ourselves from falling into apathy or indifference. So you may try offering this person a phrase like, may you be happy. May you be in charge of your own happiness. May you be free from suffering. All beings are in charge of their own karma. Finding this balance between wishing well for someone and at the same time recognizing that we do not have control over the experience of another. And you can let this good friend go from the mind and bring to mind next a neutral person. Somebody you know or with whom you have some regular interaction but don't really know super well. Not well enough that they fall too far on the side of a friend or a difficult person. 
maybe it's a coworker, a neighbor, a bus driver, somebody who works at your local grocery store or coffee shop. Perhaps you don't even know this person's name, but you can bring up an image of them. And again, you don't need to interview too many people, seeing who comes up and working with them. And equanimity is one of the practices that may actually be easier with a neutral person for some of us than with the good friend. Although you don't know any details perhaps about this person's life or experience, can be pretty certain that they want to be happy, content, at ease, free from suffering, regardless of what this looks like to them. Just connecting with the fact that this neutral person is a human, having a human experience. And we can again just tune into this cultivation of equanimity, of recognizing that although we may want to see this person happy or wish for their happiness. We are not in charge. We can be friendly, engage in kind conversation, be present. But ultimately, this person's happiness is in their hands. May you be in charge of your own happiness. Your happiness is up to you, not my wishes for you. All beings are in charge of their own karma. And remembering that you can sprinkle in some phrases of Metta, compassion, appreciative joy. But returning to this practice of balancing ourselves, caring for this person, but also remaining stable with our own hearts. Other people and situations do have the ability to bring about happiness or suffering to some degree. But ultimately, it's this person and their practice and responses that impact their level of contentment. May you be in charge of your happiness. Your happiness is up to you, not my wishes for you. All beings are in charge of their own karma.
And finally, we can let this neutral person go and bring up a difficult person. And I would recommend picking an easy, difficult person. Somebody you find difficult, but not a true enemy or somebody you hate. Maybe it's someone who you find yourself irritated with. They've caused a relatively minor harm to you or someone you care about. And as this person comes up, we may recognize any reaction that comes up. Maybe the body tightens, the mind falls into judgment, just noticing whatever happens. And you can tune into the reality of this three-dimensional being, this difficult person. Often we form fixed views around difficult people. Create them into an image in our minds as a one-dimensional being. But trying to recognize that just like you, this person has hopes and dreams, memories, regrets, joys and sorrows, pains and pleasures, and you don't have to agree with their behavior or actions. You don't have to endorse or allow any harm they've caused. With equanimity, we can recognize that this person's happiness is up to them. Maybe you can see a way in which this person's suffering and attending to their suffering with compassion, with some equanimity. May you be free from suffering and may you do what needs to be done to free yourself from suffering. Recognizing that although this person may receive support or help, compassion, we are not in charge of relieving anyone's suffering completely. May you be in charge of your own happiness. Your happiness is up to you and not my wishes for you. All beings are in charge of their own karma. And as you work with these phrases and this difficult person, noticing if you fall into apathy or indifference, Equanimity is not necessarily about distancing ourselves from someone or turning away. Rather, we practice showing up with a caring heart that's also stable and balanced. 